Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to take your Beta 85 Pro 2 and swap all the parts over to build yourself a 95mm whoop using Beta FPV's 95X frame that I have here. Um, super simple if you already have a Beta 85 Pro 2, but you can also just purchase this A01 camera 25 to 200 milliwatt VTX and 2S all-in-one flight controller directly from Beta FPV if you would like to do this as well. For this swap, this is just going to be 2S only, uh, but I do have a 2 to 4S all-in-one board on the way that I will use in here as well just to see how 3 and maybe even 4 cell will work with this 95 millimeter build. And then I went ahead and opted for these Happy Model EX1103S 7000 kV motors just because we are going from a 2 inch prop here up to the 2.5 inch prop so we do want to drop down in some kV there to account for that larger prop size. When I was first planning this build I did buy some of the Happy Model tri-blade props here um, which are really light and have a low pitch but I found that they just didn't really have much bite in the air and left me wanting quite a bit more as far as speed and agility and when I switched over to these gem fan 2540 props I noticed a huge improvement in performance so I definitely recommend those also been using these 350 milliamp hour two cell batteries from RDQ they seem to be working uh, best for me so far those guys are coming in at 19.4 19.5 grams I also tried uh, these 650 milliamp hour packs from RDQ which are coming in at 31.1 grams uh, flew fine with these on there but it's definitely not your freestyle pack it's more of uh, cruising around and kind of just high speed cruising for the most part with that heavier battery on there um, I don't get any washouts at all when I'm using these 350 milliamp hour batteries they are pretty light okay so the first step uh, I like to do here is just attach the motors to the actual frame so we'll go ahead and do that now and just run the wire for the motor right through this part of the frame and then we can set it on here and just flip it over and screw each of these in One thing to note here is that you'll see I am not actually using the carbon fiber stiffener plate that Beta FPV includes with this 95X frame to help stiffen it. Um, I find when we're doing this real light two cell only build, you really don't need that. We'll see how it goes when I start experimenting with larger batteries. Um, and then I'm using these slightly shorter titanium screws here in each motor. I'll see if I can find where I got these from and include them in the YouTube description. But the, mo uh, the screws that the motors originally came with were a little bit too long when you don't use that carbon fiber stiffener plate here. So the screws ended up going through this thinner part of the frame only and then coming in contact with those uh, windings there. One thing that you can do if you want to use the screws that come with these Happy Model motors is you can take the screw and first put it through a nylon nut if you have that size of nut and then it allows it takes up enough of the screw to where you have just enough to go through the base of the motor only and not ended up coming in contact with those windings all right so the next thing i like to do is just take this kind of guts package here camera vtx camera mount and then the all-in-one flight controller with the built-in receiver um, and even that XT30 on here. Uh, I just like to take that and drop it into the frame. 
noting which way is forward and which way is reverse. Um, don't forget to add these little rubber grommets for vibration dampening. And then just make sure you push the flight controller fully down into the frame there. This camera will just sit right on here like that. Put the screws in in a minute. Uh, so I just like to put some pressure here on the back of the board as I go ahead and plug in each of these motor leads. Uh, my XD30 here is a little bit black as you can see because this came from my 85 Pro 2 that I previously flew into the fire. Luckily I got it out within a second or two but it melted the frame uh, pretty bad so I ended up rebuilding it with this here and this is the remnants of that catastrophe but luckily even though the frame melted and some other components got pretty hot everything ended up still working just fine so it's allowing me to transfer it over to this 95 millimeter frame and get even more use out of it so now I'm just going to put the screw in that goes right here at the front of the flight controller and holds down the front of the camera mount don't want to make any of these screws too snug because uh, it will hold things down a little bit too tight and cause some vibration issues potentially. And there's one more screw that's going to go at the back to fully hold the flight controller down. All right, it looks like it's starting to come together. Now the next step is just to push on the props. What I like to do, and a lot of other people like to do when putting the props on without screws, again to save weight, is to just take a little bit of floss here. I think just about any type of floss should work. But you just wanna thread the floss through the center prop hole. Kind of pull it all the way through so that you can get a hold of both ends of the floss like that. So it doesn't go back through the hole and then you just note which way your props are spinning and then push that prop right on without letting that floss slip at all. And it should fit pretty snug and then I just end up taking scissors or something like that and cutting off this excess floss here so it's not flopping around. Go ahead and put the other three props on here with floss as well. Running this as props out, so I'm just going to make sure that I put these on with the correct rotation in mind, out and out. All right, there it is. Now the last, one of the last steps is to go ahead and set the canopy on there. I have tried flying this just in this state and then putting the screws in here and here on this mount and flying it uh, in kind of a naked state here like this to save even more weight. I think it came in at about 46 grams dry at about this stage here. Um, but for whatever reason, this canopy ends up adding a little bit more sta stability to the frame because when I ran this this way with just this camera mount without the eggshell canopy on there, I was getting quite a bit more jello than when I actually put this canopy on there and then screwed it in. And you'll see that when you go ahead and put this canopy on, the way this frame is designed, the canopy kind of sinks down in there and then the sides of the canopy end up flexing up. So it does fit in and on there pretty tight and ends up adding some bracing across this direction of the 
frame to help with the jello since we don't actually have any sort of frame assembly down in this area where you would normally put a battery strap on. So we'll go ahead and finish putting the canopy on and then I'll show you how I've added my battery strap. So here you'll see once you get that canopy on there you'll see how it kind of sinks down in there and the side flaps come up kind of push on the frame to help with stiffening it up a little bit uh, if you use the c01 pro camera and that style of canopy it'll actually go through and screw in out at these further holes here in the frame here and here um, should work just as well to help stiffen that frame in the meantime before we actually get a frame that's designed for this specific purpose all right so the next thing i like to do is put a battery strap on here and since we don't really have any thing as far as a frame to run the battery strap through here the easiest thing i've been able to figure out is just running a zip tie through the frame here like this just creating this loop here go all the way around and then come back through the zip tie and don't cinch it down all the way yet because it's a lot easier to add the battery strap before that zip tie is cinched down so we can get underneath it a lot easier so I'm just going to take this battery strap and come down this side. Tweezers come in pretty handy for getting this in there. So you got to go down and then pull it right back up like that, just so it goes underneath the zip tie. And then we'll go underneath this one and back up the other side. All right, so there you go. Basically just keeps that strap held under the zip tie and then you can go around your battery just like you normally would. And cinch it down just like that around the battery and then you can obviously shrink up your zip tie to kind of fit the frame but don't make it too tight cuz you will end up kind of bending the frame in one direction or the other. So I really don't have it any more than just snug here. Then we can cut the excess off there. And now you've got a battery strap that is really not coming off that frame. And this is essentially your finished product. Um, let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy and see what it's coming in at. It's like 47.2 grams is what I'm coming in at dry. And then if we add one of these 350 milliamp hour batteries, ends up being about 66.5 grams. All right, so the final step here is gonna be to plug in the LiPo and make sure that everything works properly. I already have this guy bound because it was a model I was already flying on a previous frame. So let's go ahead and arm it and see if looks like everything is working like it should. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and cut to some flight footage and I'll show you how this guy flies. Dancing on 